Welcome back to Advent of Code and today we're working on day 15. And we have a memory game. Let's get started. So this is about um, seeing a bunch of numbers. And then you have to remember, okay, six, was it the first time you said this number or not? Depending if this is the first time you say zero. If this is not the first time you say um, the difference between the current turn and the previous, previous turn, it has been said. So <laughs> that's a bit funny to do. Uh, and we're gonna be coding that. So I think we're gonna make this class because this is really, this really looks like a, a class with some internal data. Uh, we need a mem uh, memory. Of course, because we are going to have a program that is uh, saving all of these interesting things. Um, and yeah, so in the memory, we want to uh, remember when was this number said for the last time. And we want uh, when was this. Uh, we want the number set on the last turn. Okay, so this last number Actually this we won't need it because we also are Actually, what is our input? You know the input for the puzzle is this Oh, so we don't even need like a complex puzzle input. So you know what? We need this one first we we'll do things in a simple way first here. So here we need the uh, input. And we're gonna say, so the memory is gonna be a map, I believe. And we're gonna have, uh, the map is gonna be a number that gives us last turn. So now, for each number in input, for each uh, so number, we're gonna say uh, this that memory that set number. Oh, I forgot. We need to count the number, the current turn. This the turn is equal to one. And here we can say this dot turn plus plus. So we store the first number at, no, this is the opposite. We said, oh yeah, number last turn. Okay, so this is correct. Uh, now from there, we need to run until the turn 2020. So, uh, play until turn and here we say um, turn so we say while turn is oh, this that turn is below turn we actually have to play the, this turn here So this is interesting, we're just like really building this game from scratch. We can actually, you know what, initialize as well this game. Um, so const g equal new game. And here we get the lines of zero because there is just one line. And we have to split on the comma. And you know what, we're gonna map and we're gonna pass in so what we're doing here is that we are making sure each number here is stored as an integer here because uh, we don't want to have some problems with types, not today. <laughs> so we're going to say uh, g dot play until turn 2020 and we're going to log the um, g dot last number. And as you see, this is something that isn't existing yet. So here, each time we um, set a number here, we're going to say uh, this dot last number is equal this uh, is equal to a number. Yeah. 
So it sounds uh, correct. So this is interesting, this is a nice game, I think it should be fine. So now we have done turn 1, 2 and 3. Now we need to be on turn 4. So first of all we need to check if uh, this that last number, we need to check if this last number was already in memory. So if memory has this last number. In that case, we need to say something which is the difference between these two things. So the problem here is that we only store the last turn. So on top of this, that last number, we have to... Okay, you know what? Let's not take this special case into account, which is the case where we have to do the difference. We're going to take the other case, which is when the number was new. So otherwise, if the number is new, let new number, if the number is new, we're going to say new number equal zero. That sounds like a correct thing. So we have two cases if this number exists already or if this number doesn't exist. Now what we have to do then is to store this number. So now this is the new number. So we have to say uh, this exactly so this memory we set this new number in the memory and we say that it happened on the current turn we have to say this dot turn plus plus as well we have to say last number as well this dot last number is equal new number what else? So yeah, we, have, we need to make sure our state is correct. Uh, so before overriding here with this new number, I think we can say, we're gonna say, haha, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> this is tough. So what I want to do, I want to store two things in this memory. We want to store the last time this happened, but we also need to remember the previous time it happened. And here, so this is here, like this last number previous index, and we're gonna say, this dot memory dot get this dot last number. So basically, if it had already, so what I'm trying to avoid, I'm trying to avoid having to store a huge array uh, here. So for each number, I'm trying to avoid storing each position where this number happened. Um, otherwise, we're gonna say, okay, here number one appeared uh, at turn one, number uh, sorry, number zero appeared at turn one, number three appeared at turn two, and here we're going to say number zero appeared at turn one and four. So I want to try to avoid that. So what I'm doing is before we are overriding the memory here with the new current turn, we are storing this the previous value in this. So that's on the next turn. I think we need an example here. So we have zero, three, six. When we have six, we know this was the first time. So it was not present here. So we have new number equal zero. And actually this thing, it's not here. 
I need to set it around here. We need to say here if we say if this dot memory that has um, this uh, new number I'm making something crazy here. I think we're gonna go it, do it in another way. That's interesting. I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be quite straightforward. And here, I'm hitting a bit of uh, <laughs> a delay. So let's say we have a new number. We store the new number in the memory with the current term, and we say, okay, this was the last number. It feels a bit like the chicken and the egg problem, you know? So I think we're gonna go back. We're gonna say, okay, the memory, there is gonna be an array for each time the number is appearing. So a number will have the full history of when it appeared. We can speed things up in the future, but that's gonna that's how it's gonna be. So now I can go back to this and say if the number is there already, in that case uh, we store the difference between the last two, between the last turn and the current turn. So we say new number is equal this memory. Oh, sorry, this dot turn minus this dot memory that gets this dot last number. And actually, this interesting. <laughs> this is interesting. So we're checking the last number. And here we want to get not the previous iteration, but the one before. So let's check here. Uh, here, turn six. There was the previous number was three, so we need to say turn five minus turn two. Okay, so here we don't need to do that, we need to do const history and with history that uh, we need the last one in the array, so history that length minus one. Minus history of history dot length minus two, and because I'm seeing that, I am afraid that we can reach some issue. <laughs> what seems to be a very easy problem is starting to get quite uh, crazy. <clears throat> so, what I'm thinking is that we have. Mm, 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 we're going to. Oh, 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 let me fix this issue. Okay. So, I'm a bit confused uh, because I'm trying to store this very long array and what I might, what the better thing to do maybe is this that memory that's set here and here we set this that last number, this that turn minus one. And in here we can get the last number 
and say something like this the turn minus one minus So we are going back and we're like removing the array again. <laughs> so here we will have a map of the number and the last turn it happened. However, we compute first the next number and then we store in the memory the last number at the turn minus one. This enables us to uh, not overwrite this precious information. That is all this is about. So here we don't need to store this. I think I think this should be it. I think we should just do that. And we should have something that looks fine for today. We have four. I believe this is not at all what we wanted. Uh, but that's fine. You know, we're gonna be displaying each new number here. So we're gonna log uh, the new number. And before we do uh, this with the bigger data set, which is this one, we're going to be taking this smaller one, 0, 3, 6, and we want to go up to turn 10 so that we can really debug that cleanly. So here we, we display the number every time. Let's check. So after we should have zero three three one zero four zero zero three three one zero four and in the end we have a zero in the end where we should have oh, so we have a four in the end when while we should have a zero here hmm four is new yeah four is new indeed Uh, so we have something interesting here happening. So here we're going to log um, this the last number. What should we log? We're going to log also uh, the memory for last number. So we say, okay, the last number was a zero, or oh, maybe this is enough by one error. I think this is enough by one error. Zero. Three, three, one, zero, four, zero, and then we have another zero in it. Oh yeah, this one. Okay, so this is the correct output. Now we can take this one and figure out if we are like one hundred percent correct. That was interesting. Like we got some. Um, it feels like this is a quite of a simple problem statement, but I struggle a bit to implement that, which is great. You know, like that's great when you have like a bit of difficulty to do that. I enjoy the challenge. Okay, so here the second thing is 10. So we, we've successfully completed the two first uh, challenges. So I think I'm just gonna get the full input right away here. Let's go. Okay, the number is quite small. I would expect like something a bit bigger, but let's see. Let's go to part two. Okay, part two. Okay, the helps really liked what we did so far, but we want to de determine the number that is very big. You know what? That's fine. Uh, however, I think I need to create a new game because I am not able to... Yeah, I need to create a new game here. 
So we're just gonna create new game, D2, D2, and D2. And here this is this number here, which is like 30 million. Let's try it to see if our solution is um, fast enough. And it looks like it is fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we're doing something in a linear fashion, it just takes a bit of time. There might be some uh, optimizations, but here we are for today. <laughs> so thank you very much for following this series. Please drop a like and subscribe and a little comment as well. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.